Thank you for staying with us. An added sales, elders must know when and where the rain began to beat them. After an emergency meeting in Enugu, governors of the Southeast states have warned the indigenous peoples of Biafra, IPOB, to end its sit-at-home order in the region. They said enough is enough. Meanwhile, the Senate Minority Leader, Senator Inara Abaribi, said apart from IPOB and the, actual, and the movements for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, that's Amasob, there are more than 30 other separatist groups in the southeast. He urged government to address perceived marginalization, which he fingers as the root cause of secessionist agitations. This is a new dimension to it, Babajide. Now, you know, we've always suspected because we don't know for sure that, look, the uh, tongue coats in this uh, struggle, the guys that might just be outside the, the cell of the IPOB mainstream that are wrecking havoc in the East. Now, as confirmed by Senator Inaya Baribi, let's talk about this Monday, Monday thing first. You know, I've had the lawyer to Mas Namdekanu you know, declaring categorically that they are against the Monday Monday thing. I've had even, you know, but severally we still see that the fear factor will still not allow people to come out. And we've seen people that are killed, people burnt, people, vehicles damaged, vandalized, all in the name of this Monday Monday sit at home. And it's now becoming a big problem in the, in the Southeast. Yeah, it's a very big problem. Uh, you know, when you start a group like this, with humble beginnings, you achieve some of your aims, and in the beginning, you are excited. You never can tell where it will end. Oh. We've seen people start a movement, and that movement consumes them. You've seen people start even a political group and members of the political group expelled the same person mm -hmm. that started it. So it's possible right now that there are already many disparate groups within IPOB itself and some of those disparate groups do not at this point think that there is a need to stop the sit at home protest. I want to believe that Senator Abaribe is correct to a very large extent. I I have met him one to one and I can attest largely to his honesty. Mm. Whether they are up to thirty different groups mm. is what I cannot confirm. Mm. But yeah. but, mm. but there are disparate groups within the main IPOB itself. Just like Boko Haram. I've lost control. When Boko Haram started, mm. it was Shekau that we knew. Mm. From Shekau, we had the um, Albanawi was installed by ISIS to replace Shekau. And that was not all. Mm -hmm. We had Ansaru, another group within um, Boko Haram called Ansaru, that was killing people in the north central part of our country. And there was even a time that they ambushed soldiers on the Abuja uh, Lokoja Highway and slaughtered soldiers. So within the group, there is every reason for me to believe now that the center can no longer hold, and there are guys within the group who are simply not listening to anyone who are convinced that this sit at home thing is good and whether a map powerful comes out to say no we don't we are not interested in sit at home anymore because it's inflicting pains on our people those boys those youths who are already completely sold on this idea mm. of ipop they will not listen that is what we are seeing i was speaking with someone i said see if the leader of Boko Haram says, ah, today, let us halt our attacks on Nigerian troops, on civilian JTF, let's embrace peace, that day, he will be killed. That's what happened to, to um, um, 
Mama Noor. Mama Noor was like the father figure within Boko Haram. The entire group respected him. He even got married to um, Yusuf widow. That's the mother of Albanawi himself. He got married to her. But on suspicion that he was getting close to Nigerian authorities and that he was going to uh, get the group to embrace peace because it used to be known as Mama Noor's faction. Mm. You know, because he broke away from Shekau. So it used to be known as Mama Noor's faction. Later on, they started calling it Abanawi. So they detained him for a long time in their cell mm. and eventually they executed him. So this is the way it is with groups like this. At a point, mm. even the people who set it up could lose total control. Mm. And this one is giving this instruction. Another person is giving another instruction. So it's, it's anarchy mm. that we are seeing. Mm. You know? So the mainstream, you, you, also, you remember that of Mend, mm. that it happened like that. Mm. Mm. Uh, and when they said, oh, Mend carried out the attack, the October 1 bombing. Mm. Tom Polo came out to say, no. Men couldn't have carried out this uh, bombing because we are the men. I set up men. This is boy love. John Togo is with me. We are not in support. Only for them to discover that it was Harry Oka and his own group mm. within the men mm. that carried it out. So this, this is history repeating mm. itself. Mm. Sam, from your investigation, what's going on? I, uh, I will describe it as the gradual descent into anarchy. That is what is that is what appears to be playing out, you know, in the southeast, um, and that is why it is important that um, the kind of conversation that we have ongoing, you know, should be sustained. Even some of us have, you know, reservations about the kind of talks that are going on. No, but for the optics, it's it's good, you know. At least we saw the governors, the lawmakers, the traditional rulers. The religious leaders, you know, gather yesterday, you know, to take certain decisions. But so for some of us, it's it's more like uh, a motion without movement, because for most part of the the communique that was that was read, you either had condemnations of these, mm. or commendations for that, or resolutions on what to do and all that. So it is is a very uh, sorry sight you know, what is playing out in the, in the Southeast. And it all boils down to um, lack of confidence in leadership. There's this temptation to, you know, simplify, you know, the, the ongoing crisis as, as an issue between maybe IPOP and uh, the federal government in terms of the demand for secession and all that. But it goes beyond that. The, the fact of the matter is that the rebellion that we're witnessing it's also um, aimed at the leadership in the states. People are not pleased. For most part of it, they are not pleased. So even when we hear IPOP you know, cry about uh, they need to go their separate ways and all that, there is a very clear understanding that the people don't also think that the leadership at the state level, have largely met their ex expectations. And that's why when the governors ask or make noise about you know, uh, asking people to go out and all that, nobody, nobody takes them serious. Nobody takes them serious. Nobody wants to go out there and uh, you know, make himself vulnerable and get killed. So we have what you could term you know, a gradual descent into, into anarchy. And, and I think that there is need to open up the conversation space. Uh, if, you, if you look at what played out yesterday, you find that those who were involved in talks were more like the privileged few, apparently talking to themselves. You know, those who matter in the game uh, don't seem to be part of it. Hmm. At the end of the day, they had traditional rulers, they had leaders of Ohanis in Digbo, and they had the governors. Yes. But apparently, they were just talking to themselves. Those, the those, yes, those who pull the lever 
at, at the moment. You, you, didn't, you don't find them there. You could argue mm. that behind the scenes there could be, you know, you know talks going on. Mm. But for all we know, at the moment, our people, they, our people don't seem to be talking to themselves. The media not to those who are saying that if the DSS refused to produce Mas Namde in mm -hmm. court on the 21st, mm -hmm. that this sit at home is going to be one month. Yes. And if this happened, if October 21st is um, the next court hearing, mm -hmm. an number election is on the 5th, you know the implication if they are to go for a, a whole month. Mm -hmm. And it's so, 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 so inconceivable. Do you, do you understand? Yeah, that means something drastic must be done. Yes, and what? The, why would the DSS not bring Madame de Cano to court? Why? There's no reason in the world to not bring him to court. He's in Abuja. Yes. <laughs> you have the security apparatus. No one, no man is bigger than the state. You can provide all the security that is needed. You bring him to court. People bigger than him in this world have been put on trial. So why wouldn't you bring him to court? If you could arrest him, why wouldn't you take him to court? This was similar to what happened to Shogore when they began to buy time. That, okay, give us 90, 90 more days to keep him in detention without trial. And they just said, no, I'm not going to extend this by another 90 days. Oh. They put him on trial. And they were doing that to ensure that Shogore did not get bail. Because the longer you keep the, you keep renewing it, you keep renewing it, it will be put in the slammer mm. indefinitely. That was what they wanted, because they knew as soon as they uh, they, 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 they brought him to court, he will get bail. So the judge said, "No, I'm not going to keep extending this 90 days uh, uh, time ceiling for you people." to conclude your investigations. No, he declined. And then we had that drama in the, in the courtroom. Uh, uh, courtroom for which invariably the uh, letter to the DSS had to apologize to the judge and all that needless drama. So there is no reason in the world. I do not subscribe to shutting down the south Southeast for one whole one month. month. I don't even I see how a people can this. survive if that should happen. Because these are people who take pride in commerce. Mm. They are the leaders of our country the when leaders, it comes to commerce. They hold the economy. Yes. The Yorubas may be good at the diplomacy and all that. God created us and gave us different gifts. When it comes to commerce, the Southeast leads the way. So how do those people, how do they survive if you shut down the area? So Oaneze has pleaded that, look, this should not happen. Wanezi has pleaded with them to not carry out that threat. But we are saying that the DSS have no reason in the world to not produce an accused person in court. If you could go that route to get him arrested because you wanted to make him face justice. A man cannot face justice in detention. The judge has to see him. He must have his day in court. He must have his day in court. Is that, that's the thing. So Absolutely. don't don't he up the polity needlessly by keeping a man in detention. As do, what will they do if you, if you bring him to court? Are they going to grab him from you, people? His supporters don't have the capacity to snatch him while you are taking him to, to court to not in Abuja. You know how you know how Abuja is. And that area, even where the courtroom where it is, is a heavily protected part of, of, of town. Seen. Yes. So what are we talking <laughs> about? <laughs> Bring the man to court. Hmm. All right. I have Ada from Joss. Yes. Hello. Ada from Joss. All right. Go ahead. John, I mean, I mean, God will bless you for saying the truth. The truth must be told. He said, I bless the Southeastern governors. They are treating this issue of airport in, in, in case You are talking about uh, uh, obeying orders. How can people obey their orders? When they, they are not provided any security, they will probably they say they, oh. they, they form. Well, it was right. on, on, on arrival, you know. Can't they go to the president or even the governor? The governor is in the good books of the president. Can't they go and plead with the president to make sure they release this, I mean, take the man to court, you know. If it, no matter the crime he has committed, let them try him. 
what is causing the problem? They say they are preaching. What preaching are they having? They are having a tea party. All of them themselves, themselves, they are even afraid of the iPod. You are discussing something. The people uh, in question are not even there. Nobody is there Thank is you, the <laughs> Now, there was a proposal for Ibuweago and the elder brother to the governor of Ibuweago states that General Omahi um, um, actually was, the, you know, the brainchild and the framework and everything is ready, but nobody complained that none of the state governments were ready to fund it. Now, in that communique yesterday, they now said, before December, it will, be a go, will kick off. Now, with the level of sophistry, with the level of ammunition these guys <laughs> bandy around, it will, be a go, will just be like another Amoteku. I don't know, maybe they will be allowed mm -hmm. to carry arms. Can they face these guys? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even, start. even start. It <laughs> even start from somewhere, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't even think that the governors take themselves serious. I'm sorry, if I if I sound uh, trivial. Even among within within their ranks, you could tell that uh, there is lack of cohesion. Not all of them, you know. Attended yes, do you understand? Uh, mm, the man was true. not there, and mm. there is no will to execute that plan. It's very clear. Mm. So even the 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 end of year you know talk promise is is just to buy time they are not united on just that to give the impression that yes, that's mm -hmm. yes. that's I, that I, that I, I, that I just said earlier that if you look at that entire conversation it's just about motion without movements hmm. nothing concrete we would, uh, we condemn this. I can we uh, commend yes, you. Yes, yes. Uh, because this if, is what even, even the report, it was even, it was like six even, months ago. Even, even, the, even the committee, the organizing committee that was set up to go study the issue of uh, marginalization and the rest of them, the governor said they would go back to study it. And then we know how these issues are treated in, you know, within our environment. <laughs> so um, I, I hope uh, the governors from the South understand that there is rebellion within within that region very serious that's nobody's so listening to them yes that's what you tell some people that if they don't go out on monday you will sack them they refuse, they refuse to go out they refuse to go out so you threaten banks that if they don't open on uh, on monday you will withdraw their license uh, to operate nobody listens to you yes. you think people Did will you just go and waste their no, lives you know, somebody was no. talking about revolution this morning and the person was saying that it's not when people pick arms and everything that you get the former revo revolution and absolutely these guys that they started in the way they've started and uh you know they are facing the consistent authority that this is the kind of revolution no. and if we can't do something if they can't do something they're not holding the power they're holding the executive power but it's not effective they can't talk to their people they can't and these are the people elected the, the, the elites from the southeast have lost the right to be taken seriously some of them will take contracts for road construction in the southeast mm -hmm. and refuse to execute there are some notorious ones mm -hmm. The major highways linking the southeast, you take contract, you refuse to do it. He knows the people that I'm talking about. Mm. Just that we just have to protect uh, <laughs> I mean, them. So that, because now you the, understand the, the people so. know, the people, these boys know that these are their oppressors. Mm. People fail to fix roads even after taking money to fix roads. They don't want to listen to anybody now. So now are and the governors, the they can't see the governors as serious people. Hmm. Just they as he said, there is no coercion. There was a governor who was complaining about another governor that he was the one who brought the armed forces to the southeast and now see what is happening. The one who brought the armed forces to the southeast, we know him. Even his own state is not safe as we speak. Because it's not every issue that you can resolve <laughs> with uh, yeah, uh, uh, with, with force. force, yeah, you know, I've heard that the um, the Southeast Caucus of National Assembly they are looking for a way to solve this problem politically. I pray that their efforts succeed, mm. because if their efforts succeed, it will mm. save us the carnage that is going on in the, the southeast. In the southeast, because look. It looks like the people can't be protected. So once you can't protect the people, if the people who are killing them say stay in your rooms, hmm. they will stay. They will not listen to their governor. How many times have those governors issued threats? Nobody takes them seriously. Nobody listens to them. Their words are not law anymore. And nobody is convinced that, look, the armed forces will protect them. In fact, people say sometimes that 
one of the reasons people don't want to go out is that even the armed forces, you are not sure that you won't be a victim of accidental discharge on a day when you go out because you think that there are soldiers on the streets. So then how many places can they protect? You protect the state capital, how about other communities? How many soldiers do we have to do that kind of job in the Southeast? Oh. All right, moving on.